Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Today I will be your guide through history as we take a look at Tartessos, Myth or Reality. Before we begin, just a reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. Moving right along, mythology tells us one thing while archaeology tells us another. Where was the city of Tartessos located? Tartessos was a semi-mythical harbor city and the surrounding culture on the south coast of the Iberian Peninsula. This region is today known as Andalusia in Spain. The city is said to have been located at the mouth of the Guadalcadir River. Tartessos first appears in the first millennium before the Common Era in sources from both Greece and the Near East. Herodotus describes the city as beyond the Pillars of Heracles, which is today's Straits of Gibraltar. Roman authors tend to echo the earlier Greek sources, however, from around the end of the millennium there are indications that the name Tartessos had fallen out of use and the city may have been lost to flooding. The Bible states that Tartessos was the merchant of silver, iron, tin, and lead. This can be found in Ezekiel 27.12. Other classical sources identify Tartessos as the city of Tarshish. This city was said to have been a port in southern Spain and was rich of metals which were initially traded with the Phoenicians. However, Josephus identified Tarshish within the Cilician city of Tarsus, which is more widely accepted. Archaeological discoveries in the region have built up a picture of a more widespread culture identified as Tartessian. The Tartessians were thought to have been a fabulously wealthy people who were rich in a variety of metals. In the 4th century before the Common Era, the historian Ephorus describes a prosperous market called Tartessos, with much tin carried by the river as well as gold and copper from the lands of the Celts. Trade in tin was very lucrative during the Bronze Age, since it is an essential component of bronze and is comparatively rare. Herodotus, referring to the king of Tartessos, Arganthonios, presumably named for his wealth in the city. Arganthonios is the only Tartessian king we know of and who can be verified by a stele unearthed in an archaeological dig in the southwestern peninsula. The people of Tartessos became important trading partners with the Phoenicians, whose presence in Iberia dates from the 8th century before the Common Era. Since trade was so lucrative, the Phoenicians built a harbor of their own in Gadir, which is present-day Cadiz. However, many of the ancient historians were often mistaken about Tartessos and its location. Several early sources, such as Aristotle, refer to Tartessos as a river. He claimed that it rises from the Pyrenees and flows out to the sea beyond the Pillars of Heracles. In reality, no such river traverses the Iberian Peninsula. According to the 4th century before the Common Era, Greek geographer and explorer Pythias, both he and Strabo placed Tartessos at the Baetis River Valley, which is the present-day Guadalquivir Valley in southern Spain. Parsanius, writing in the 2nd century of the Common Era, also concurred with the writings of both Strabo and Pythias. Modern archaeological digs have found hundreds of artifacts and treasures rich in gold just three kilometers west of Seville. Archaeologists have been able to piece together a larger picture of the Tartessians, which is now believed that their culture to have expanded across western Andalusia into southern Portugal from the Algarve to the Vinalopo River in Alicante. Based on the artifacts found by archaeologists, many have begun to associate the lost city with Huelva. This is in part due to Huelva contains the largest accumulation of imported elite goods. What then do we know of the Tartessian people? There is very little data on these Mediterranean people. An opposing school of thought is that the Tartessians descended from the Torduli, an ancient tribe found in Iberia. Yet they were not at all like the other indigenous tribes that inhabited the peninsula. 
We do know a little about their religion. Archaeologists assume, like most Mediterranean peoples, they were polytheistic. They worshipped the goddess Astarte and the god Baal. This was most likely due to the influence of their primary trading partners, the Phoenicians. It is interesting to note that many sanctuaries were inspired by Phoenician architecture and several images of Phoenician gods have been excavated in Cadiz, Huelva, and Seville. Since we know very little about the Tartessian people, what do we know about their language? The Tartessian language is an extinct pre-Roman language once spoken in southern Iberia. The language does bear some similarities to both Celtic and Indo-European languages. The oldest indigenous texts of Iberia date from the 7th to the 6th centuries before the Common Era and were written in Tartessian. These texts have been found in southwestern Spain and southern Portugal. It is surprising to see that such a prolific people of vast wealth all but disappeared by the 4th century before the Common Era. And what of the city of Tartessos? It is generally accepted by most of the scholar community that due to climate change, the city that was built on marshlands fell prey to the ever-changing conditions. What of the Tartessian people? That is a question that we hope over time archaeologists will be able to piece together. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Traveler's Tales. Just a reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. For your convenience, we have included our email address and Instagram information. We love hearing from our subscribers. Please don't hesitate sharing any questions or comments you may have. If you haven't subscribed to Traveler's Tales, please do. This really is the best way to help our channel grow. Traveler's Tales will return with part two of Tartessos, Myth or Reality. Until we meet again at the crossroads of folklore and history, Tartistos.